Let's go. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're here with Gonzalo Martinez, who worked with us at GMT. We're here with uh, Zach Hoffman. Uh, Zach Hoffman is there, uh, right now, well, he, we've been friends for more than eight years now. How, many, how much time have we been friends for? I think you came into my life uh, around eight years ago, yeah. It was like 2014, yeah. 2013, yeah. That's awesome. And, and what I was mentioning to Gonzalo uh, was that Zach, uh, Zach is actually the reason I got into Bentley. I mean, I think you did all of my essays. I don't know if we're allowed to say this, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you did all of my essays movie. in college and, and you're, you were always a great student. And, and, and I, I respect you a lot. So I think that a lot of the people that are listening will gain a lot of knowledge from what you've learned, from what you've done after, after you graduated from, from college in 2014. And, and yeah, so I'm, I'm going to talk a brief about you. This is, I'm going to just go through your LinkedIn mm -hmm. and then you we're, we're, we're going to ask you a little bit about yourself, who is Zach Hoffman, et cetera. So Zach, you went to Cactus Shadow High School. Is that in, in Switzerland or in, 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 in Arizona? In Arizona. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, I went to high school in Arizona. It was the first place that I spent uh, four consecutive years of schooling, actually. Oh, okay. So I moved around a lot as a kid. That, that's great. And then you, you, well, you went to Bentley. In mm -hmm. Bentley, I mean, you were pretty involved in a lot of stuff, I remember. Uh, I'm looking at your LinkedIn, and uh, while you were in Bentley, I mean, you did a lot of internships, Morgan Stanley, Browns Harriman. A, you, you even started a company, Team Lab. It was like a nonprofit. And then you spent a lot of time in Hitachi Consulting, which, I mean, they do a lot of digital transformation, which is some mm. of the things that we're focusing on. And after you spent almost three years there, and then you spent almost three years in Accenture, which is a Fortune 500 company. They, their annual revenue is more than $30 billion a year. So it's one of like the top consulting firms in in the world and after that i think we can all say you got tired a little bit about the corporate world and you went into the tech stars yeah it's pretty popular you guys invest in hundreds and hundreds of startups and now which is the reason i mean we we wanted to talk to you a lot about is now you got your you're all in in, in, in the startup world and you're working at bilingua app mm -hmm. bilingua app, bilingua app. Okay, bilingual app, and you're living in Germany, which is mm -hmm. crazy. Hey, I we have I need to visit, but I've got a guest. Yeah, before. like that. That's a little bit of, of of the intro that we have on on LinkedIn. I think you know one of the one, uh, and I think a lot of people that are watching this this interview would say, okay, Zach went into the corporate world and now is tra has transferred into the startup world and what, how does the corporate world help you in what you're doing today? All this stuff that, that we're going to ask you about, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question, which is like, who is Zach Hoffman? Like, how would you describe yourself? Yeah, no. So I would say uh, Zach Hoffman is a curious cat. You know, I've always been interested in problems and. Oops. Zach, I think Zach got muted. Yeah. No, it's not. I think he got muted. Let's, let's, let's write to Zach. Can you hear He's me? Back. Yeah, we can hear you yeah. now. Now you're back. Now you're back. Now you're back, Zach. We'll try it, it, it's the hair, again. man. Uh, living, in, the, uh, living in East Berlin, I don't know what to tell you. The internet isn't great, um, okay. but who is Zach Hoffman? Curious cat. I find the world an interesting place to live, and I've always enjoyed uh, just trying to figure stuff out. So um, in high school, that just meant taking on subjects that were, you know, always a little bit out of my comfort zone and pushing myself, uh, and then that translated into college, um, just, you know, always looking to take on an extra credit or join a group. Um, I'm also a pretty creative person as well. I like uh, photography and I've always you know seen myself in uh, a creative space of sorts whether it's with filmmaking um, like I said photography 
or even writing. So uh, I try and I've got a lot of itches that I need to scratch. And so try and figure out different ways that I can do that. And uh, I've been lucky enough in my life to not only do that personally, but also professionally as well. That's awesome, Zach. Hey, and I, you mentioned in the beginning of the call that you traveled a lot when you were young. Can you t tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So my, my family's in the hotel business. Uh, both my parents um, worked for major brands like Ritz Carlton, the Four Seasons. Um, and most recently, my dad was with Waldo Pistoria Group. Um, which is owned by Hilton. And so we, uh, there, you have army brats, you know, that go from base to base. I was a hotel brat and basically had the good fortune of going to beautiful properties around the world um, that my dad called his office and that I got to call home. So it was, uh, it, I'm the luckiest bastard alive uh, because this is uh, basically my upbringing was every two years we got to move to this incredible new place and uh, meet new people and uh, live in a hotel. Man, so, I, I, I think that, you, so you were like Zach and Cody. Do, Zach and <laughs> Cody, ter, ha, a, have you seen Zach and Cody? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's based on the sweet life of my sister, Zoe. So it's <laughs> the sweet life of Zach and Zoe. <laughs> Zach and Zoe. So Gonzalo, for a, or for the people that might not know, the Waldorf Astoria, that's where presidents go. Boo, yeah, from yeah. JF Kennedy. Well, let's know. So, Zach, tell us, of, like, it's like the most popular hotel in the world. Like, I think it's one of the, one of the most expensive real estate properties in the, in the world. Like, tell, tell us a little bit about the story about that hotel. If, if, I mean, the other, I remember when you showed me a picture of, like, the residential suite. That's Crazy. my dream. Like, I want to live there. I think it's, uh, it's everyone's dream. And I can't take any credit for it. I was just, uh, you know a lucky sort of passenger um, in my dad's professional life. But the, hotel, the Waldorf Astoria is, uh, it's called the greatest of them all. It's a huge city block of over a thousand hotel rooms. And as you mentioned, the presidents have stayed there. Some of the greatest celebrities of their age have, uh, you know, used it as their makeup rooms before they go to award shows and, uh, or just call it, you know, their vacation spot when they visit New York. So. I think what's uh, the history there is over a hundred years of incredible stories and people who have gone through, but um, I don't know though. I think the, the biggest thing for me was the architecture as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful building um, in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. And, uh, but inside you, there's always something going on. You know, when you have a thousand guest rooms, a huge staff of people who are dedicated to delivering uh, the, the highest possible service to the guests, then there's, there's always something interesting going on. My, my favorite thing was when my dad would come home for dinner and it's sort of like, okay, you know, what, uh, what do you have like, hey, Zach, 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 do you have like some, is it like room service every night? Like, uh -huh. like oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> my my parents are both accomplished chefs. So I was, uh, they cooked home meals for us and. No way. You know, like you, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, we would, we would get, you know, a treat every once in a while to, to go to dinner, but it was usually with, um, you know, someone who was visiting from the hotel that it was a, more of an entertainment or something. Zach, and what famous person did you meet? Like, or, or, I mean, you were in college, maybe you didn't have a lot of time to, to, to be there, you know? Yeah. Or, don't worry about it. He's, it was East Berlin. <laughs> Internet, internet, East, East, Berlin, East Berlin, like, wait, Gonzalo, let's talk a little bit about history here. East Berlin and West Berlin, like, which is the communist one? The, yeah. <laughs> the East one. The East one. Ah, the East one, the East one. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Zach. Sí. There we go. Okay. Can, can, can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Perfect, perfect. I'm going. I'm going to go in and out probably the entire call. So I apologize. No worries. No worries. No, that's okay. No, so worries. A uh, okay, Zach. Now, how did you end up in Boston? Why Bentley? Like, what happened there? Yeah, it's uh. So like I said, you know, I think the world's an interesting place to live. For me, I was um to countries. I fell into studying economics and I loved this with a passion. 
And so this is what led me to look at Bentley as a business school, because I knew that I wanted to understand how businesses and organizations uh, come together to achieve a common goal. And Bentley was the perfect size for me. It, uh, I was really excited to be surrounded by people who shared this interest in, in business. Um, in hindsight, you know, maybe going to a more liberal arts college would have, you know, kind of broadened my exposure to different topics, but Bentley was perfect. It's where I met my best friends. It set me up on an incredible, incredible career path. Um, and it's gotten me to where I am today, among other privileges and, you know, luck in my life. That, that, that's so. great, man. That's great. No, I love Bentley too. And I think we had a lot of fun. And okay, now here comes the, 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 the cool question. So what happened after college? So Zach, I remember that you in college, uh, you, you, you had a, a lot of jobs and why did you decide to get into consulting or were you just applying to everything? Did you knew you wanted to get into consulting? No, I, I'll be honest and say that I had no idea what I wanted to do after college. It was a, uh, you know, there's this mad rush to get a full-time job once you graduate and at first, I thought I was going to go and do banking like a lot of our friends did. Uh, I had done some internships in the space, but realized I wasn't really interested in it. And so a friend of mine, uh, Eunice, uh, he had gotten a job in consulting and he had said, you know what, check this out. It's a different type of work using a lot of the same skills. So uh, I, was, I applied to a few different companies and the, uh, the thing that consulting companies and their interviews do differently is called a case interview. They basically give you a problem, a business problem to solve. And I thought that was a really cool way of, you know, seeing how someone thinks, break down any problem. And I, I took to just the, the type of questions. Whoops. I'm back. You're back. Yeah. We're back. Okay, go ahead. The, uh, so with Hitachi, I was uh, supposed to focus more on like operations work, kind of this true management consulting. Um, but I did a variety of different projects. I think that's the coolest thing that uh, a consultant gets to do is you see a lot of different things. And the, uh, I worked on a NAP of our global electronic manufacturers e-commerce website trying to reimagine what that could look like. Uh, I helped a global food manufacturer upgrade their te technology infrastructure and then also integrate it with a company that they later merged with. Um, so it's, uh, I really got to see a bunch of different industries really fascinating during the, the time at Hitachi. Okay, okay, okay. And why? And then later I moved into Accenture, which was, no, tell me. And Zach, there, you probably must have, were, were you involved in hiring when you were at Hitachi? Like, did you have to hire people? Did you have to manage people when you were there? I wasn't so much of, I wasn't hiring outside, uh, individuals into the company, but I was actively a part of recruiting people onto our project teams. So uh, the way that consulting works is you have a bench of people and there's work that you need to staff these people on. And so for the projects that we had worked with, um, for when I was lucky enough to lead, you know, a small team, I got to kind of pick who I wanted to be on that team. And that was uh, a really interesting sort of step into what, you know, being people and uh, defining work, getting work done, and yeah. Zach, I love asking this question because I, I deal with it a lot. And since you had to, in, you've, all, you've been in consulting six years, you can tell us about Accenture in a, in a bit, but now that you've worked with a lot of people, you've been in numerous projects, mm -hmm. I, I can assume that you've had terrible teammates and that you've had good teammates and that you can mm -hmm. defer what makes a good teammate and what makes a terrible one. And can you mm -hmm. share us a little bit about that experience and what makes a good leader and what makes a terrible leader? Or I would say, let's start with teammate then, and then let's go to manager, okay? Yeah, let's start with teammate, definitely. 
Um, although I think that they're they're both similar in terms of what makes a good or bad one. And I think uh, just across the board, if someone's not going to listen to you, um, they're not open to receiving ideas. I think uh, they're not a person that you want on your team. A team is meant to help each other. Um, you need to you know have trust and respect for the work that each other's doing. Um, if the other person is willing to play ball, then it's really hard to, to meaningful uh, work that will lead to real success, in my opinion. Um, I've been lucky enough to actually work with people that are smarter than me and better than, at my job than I am. So I, I think the, the best teammates are the ones that you've learned from. Um, you know, and I think this then builds into the respect because they fill a gap that you don't necessarily have as well. When we, when we talk about a leader, though, I think... Zach, do you want to maybe... What separates a good leader from a bad one? Maybe if you remove your camera. Yeah. Let's try that. We've, we've already okay. seen your good looking face. I can also try. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Is it better? Gracias, Danny. Uh, we'll try that if that's any better. Now, now, now. Now. Um, yeah. So that's what I think. You know, great. The, uh, and with a, with a leader, it's, I think a leader is supposed to help you as an individual, you know, achieve what you want to do in the scope of the greater team's objectives and missions. Um, and a good leader can help you understand what you need to do in order to achieve those goals as well. Um, so they, they don't necessarily do the work for you. They don't necessarily tell you exactly what you need to do either. I think um, someone who can make you more aware of yourself um, and then helping you learn in the process about what needs to get done, the things that you need to think about, these are skills that then, as you figure them out on your own with the guidance of someone else, that's then when in the next uh, engagement or situation, you have confidence to call on those skills because they come from you. Okay, okay, that, man, that's, that's a great response, Zach. A, uh, another question that I have is, did you ever have to f fire someone or, or no? No, I've never had to fire. Not, no one yet. No one I yet. I fired a few. Not yet. No one yet. Okay, okay, okay. Then another question that I have is, when you were in Hitachi, you probably were surrounded by big companies. And you, I, I can't imagine that you saw great companies and you saw terrible companies. Well, I don't know if you're not terrible, but you saw companies that were struggling. Mm -hmm. What did you see that differentiated the good companies from the bad companies that you were involved with? Like what was something that you noticed that, wow, I like this company more because of X, Y, and Z than this one. Yeah. It's a, uh... It's a good point because I think all companies do struggle. Um, you know, there are always challenges that a business faces, but the, the good companies are quick to understand that they can do something about it. It's, uh, it's, you know, they don't sit on their hands and they don't resist the upcoming change. I did a lot of work um, about, like I said, uh, upgrading this technical infrastructure. It was working with SAP, um, and a huge multinational corporation. And so at every point there was someone who didn't want to move into, you know, the new software environment, or they didn't want to participate in, you know, this new world that uh, they were going to be living in once we went live with this new technology. And so at the same time, there's a lot of that we as consultants did to help bring our client along that journey with us. Um, the, so I think that's, if you can inst instill, instill that mindset throughout the enterprise, that's a great company somewhere that growth, not only professionally, but personally in, in every single worker, um, you know, resonates. A bad one is where everyone, you know, knows the right thing on the wall and everyone's just waiting for the, the floor to give out. Um, it, no one wants to be on a sinking ship, but if, if the <laughs> Titanic's going down, I want, I want people to throw rafts in the ocean and, and try to swim. Perfect, perfect. 
That's that's a good response. Like that's a good response. Then I, I don't know if I have any last questions about that. Yeah. Okay. I have I have one last question. A lot of people will want to go. They want to go to a company and they want to just give their best impression, right? They they want to succeed at their job. Can you give us like a few tips for young people who go to a company that can differentiate them from from everybody else from everyone else? impress their managers, impress their teammates. What do you, what advice would you give, you know, I don't know, 22 year old, 23 year old going, going to their first job or, or somebody switching companies, like what thing that can they do to have a good impression as soon as that, as soon as they arrive? Yeah. The, uh, I think the first thing that you can do is just always be willing to learn. Um, it, it makes your life a lot easier when, new things come up if you're just willing to take them on. Uh, have, have this mentality of saying yes when uh, an opportunity comes your way. That's how I got my, my break. Uh, when I was in sales uh, pitches. Because can you go, can there you repeat, wasn't a lot of work for me back, yet, back. but you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can, can you repeat what you were saying? Because it got blocked and I think this, this response is going to be a good one. Yeah. No, no, I was just saying, uh, you know, have a, have a yes mentality, take on the opportunities that can present it to yourself and um, have this, think that, you know, even if it's not your job, um, you can still help in some way. And, and I think this idea of trying to not do other people's jobs for them, but thinking about how you can make your boss's life easier is the easiest way that you as a worker can do a better job. If you can take something off of their plate, if you can make um, something more succinct, it can, that can be as easy as just writing a better email that conveys information to them so they don't have to spend more time. Um, the other thing, I, I think this is maybe what I, t I took from my dad is just uh, in the hotel business is to have a hospitality to the work that you do. Um, if you actually care about the success of the other person and uh, you know, help them solve their problems, make them shine. If, uh, if you don't care about getting the credit for the work, but the work itself is good, uh, I think that will just speak volumes later in, you know, down the road. Fuck man, that's, that's, that's great advice, Zach. And, and, <laughs> and man, I, every time you talk about the hotel business, I love the hotel business, man. I wanna have a big ass hotel when I grow up. So like, I love the hotel business and, and man, you're so lucky there, but, but yeah, that's pretty good advice. And I think that to the people that are listening, we, I'll just rephrase Sack was saying that you want to have a yes mentality. You know, you want to treat people with respect, have this hospitality, a, add some hospitality environment to your work. I don't know if I said that correctly in English, but yeah. you know, just, just try to be very nice, have a good attitude when, when, yeah. you're, when you're working, make your boss's life easier. Just yeah. help people solve their problems. Now, uh, okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and Gonzalo's gonna ask you a, a few questions, Zach, about mm -hmm. your new project, about Bilingua app and how you got into the startup world and, and well, Gonzalo, start asking me how Zach went into this new project that he's in. So I'm gonna go uh, and let Gonzalo take take the meeting. The, the hey, so, so Zach, thank you, Daniel. Zach, what is what is Bilingua app, and why is it so exciting? Also, how yeah. do you start in it? So Bilingua app is an award-winning mobile app that mm -hmm. teaches languages using stories and audiobooks. Uh, if you ever learned English, say, by, by watching an American TV show or listening to pop music, um, it, it builds on a similar idea that you can have educating content that's also entertaining. So the app secret sauce is this parallel text technology. Essentially, we have your native language as well as the language that you're learning shown side by side. And there's a nifty karaoke animation that follows. 
There's also a native narrator that's speaking to you so you can practice your list comprehension. Now, uh, the app itself is there's a library of texts from classic works like Sherlock Holmes and Snow White, cultural subjects. Um, we have news stories, children's books, like I said, even music. And this is translated into 14 languages. So wow, it's, uh, it's a new way of and I can't take any credit for, for the work that's been done. Our CEO, David Montiel, he at Google, XDA, X LinkedIn, he built this as a side project uh, a couple of years ago. He was just uh, writing some lines of code and it, he, he figured out that this was a concept that really worked with a lot of people. Uh, in the language learning market, you have a lot of different options to, to learn a language, but um, everyone still has a hard time actually learning it. So um, we're trying to come at it from a different angle. We think that instead of trying to make something that's hard and tough to learn, um, interesting, if you start with something interesting, you'll naturally want to learn it. So that's a little bit about the app. Um, it's, well, Gonzalo, did you, it's available did you in the... Were you able to hear the beginning? Yeah, I did. Okay. Could you? Yeah, a, a little, a little, but but yeah, no, no. So Zach, it's it's a platform where you go to learn any language, but it's fun. It's not just some boring class, you know, that learn that you learn a language correctly. Correct? Exactly, exactly. And it's available in the Apple iOS store. It's available in Google Play. Um, we have a. a like I said, nearly 150 texts uh, across 14 languages. So there's a lot for people to actually use already. And there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up in the future. Um, just you, you had asked why it's exciting. Uh, I, the company sort of is at this intersection of entertainment and education. And yeah, I the, uh, I think you, what Corona really showed the world is the future is in digital learning in online education. So we as an ed tech company are really excited. Just the, the fact that the market accelerated, there's a lot more adoption, um, you know, among users in that sense. But yeah. it's a, uh, uh, it's a thing it's say we see our way of teaching just as a natural extension of someone's daily habits, whether it's reading books or news, uh, listening to the radio. The, the challenge is gonna be to build a business that creates content like Netflix and that helps people acquire a language like Duolingo, but do it better than Netflix and Duolingo. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> so that's yeah, the exciting the part. best from both. Yeah, it's, uh, we're lucky that we can, our, what, what a lot of people think of as competition are really, uh, you know, our compliments or inspirations for us. So we're really excited about um, drawing from a lot of different worlds to, uh, to make the app the premier place where people want to learn. So Zach, I, I imagine these couple of months have been very important uh, for, for you. Well, at the app, you've got to realize how, how important digital learning really is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and uh, you've seen across the, the industry, a lot of companies with huge success um, raising, you know, massive new rounds, high valuations, um, which is exciting news for us just because it, it means that we're not only in a big market, but the market itself is growing as well. So, yeah, I see. Zach, talk to you about, talk to us about languages. How many languages do you know right now? Right now, I, I know a little in several. So, uh, mein Familie kommt aus der Schweiz und ich wohne in Berlin. So, ich spreche yeah. ein bisschen Deutsch. Y uh, hablo español un poquito porque todos mis amigos de universidad uh, eran latinos. <laughs> eh, uh, yeah, J'ai estudié francés dans l'école. Et uh, ma copine est française, uh, en, en français. So I, I speak, uh, 
I don't speak any very well, but I can order a beer. I can ask for a coffee. Um, I think yeah, I can you're survive in different places. <laughs> Which is what it's about, I think. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the core of what language is, you know? That's the, the big Okay, uh, Zach, how much time have, have you spent at the company, at the Lingua app? Yeah, so I met David, the CEO, in January. The Lingo app was a part of the Berlin Techstars program, and he was one of nine other companies who were part of this three-month accelerator. But uh, David, the Lingo app was a little different. There was a real product in the market. The, the company okay. makes money. It's profitable at the moment. And um, he has 300,000 monthly active users that really love the product. Um, and so it, it was a really interesting project. Um, so I worked with him during the Techstars program. And uh, afterwards, David, he brought on a co-founder and they, uh, they offered me this opportunity to join them on this rocket ship and I couldn't say no. 100%, man. You went 100% all in. Yeah. 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 Do you have any more questions? Uh, that's about it. Well, I would like to know what, what, what goals, uh, what are some goals of the company for this year? Yeah, so, so the biggest goal we had was uh, mm -hmm. to raise a round of financing. So, okay. so we're, we're wrapping this up. It's uh, an exciting time in the business history and we're getting venture capital uh, as well as money from Europe, from Latin America, and the US as well. So that was kind of the biggest goal because we have a lot of really exciting projects that we want to start executing on. Uh, some of that's improving the product. So we want to put yeah, okay. in the app this learning methodology, um, you know, really help people to go from their first word to finishing their first book. Um, in terms of content, we know that we need to invest in a really scalable process that we can put any type of text in um, and on that is that will then on the other side uh, you know be something that our users really want we have a lot of data about the uh, the types of articles and stories that people like to read but maybe not only they enjoy but also that they find educational as well and then um, the other thing is uh, we need to invest in marketing. We, uh, we have a huge user base through purely organic content or organic growth. It was, uh, it's a blessing that the company hasn't spent really a dollar on any marketing. So it's uh, one of the, the big goals for the year is figuring out what our distribution channels will be to acquire the next generation of language learners, whether that's through paid acquisition and on or social media, um, going through things, influencers. Uh, it's, uh, they're, they're, we're trying to figure all of that stuff out. And there's, uh, I think the biggest thing with a startup is there's so many different things that you could be doing, but really making sure that you're focused on those one or two really key goals um, that every day you're just working a little bit more to, to achieve them. And that's awesome. Zach, I've heard that learning languages has like some great benefits. Rather, other than the obvious, what are some benefits that you know, like, I, I know this, this might sound stupid, but rather than the obvious of just knowing the language and going to that country, I think it just helps you think differently. I've heard, like, what, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm wrong there. No, 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 you, you, you hit it right on the money. I mean, uh, the obvious one is that you can communicate. I mean, Danny, you're, Gonzalo, your natural language is Spanish, right? But mm -hmm. here you are having this incredible conversation in English, so it just, it immediately opens for it's, uh, to meet people in and whatnot and have meaningful connections. But I think some of the other benefits, you, you understand your own language better. Um, I think learning the grammar of another foreign language, it makes you look maybe with a, a bit more nuance or thought as to how you put sentences together, how you, what words you use you start to notice things where words come from 
Um, and I think uh, languages are one of the OG subjects that, you know, the Greeks and the Romans taught. Um, it's, uh, it's something as old as time, basically. And so it's a, it's a super powerful tool that in the end, it really just like, it gets you one step closer to understanding uh, other humans, which is, you know, I think what we need in this world right now. 100%, 100%. Gonzalo, uh, do you have any, any, any more questions? I do, I do have a few more now that we're almost done. We're, we have like less than a minute. No, Zach, uh, I, I really appreciate your time. We've been here for 40 minutes. Uh, as to the people that are listening, we, we respect you a lot and I respect you a lot. I think Bilingua app is so lucky to have you. And I, I'm pretty sure that you're, you guys are gonna kill it. I'm, what can we do to download it? We go to the iOS app and the Android app iOS Download and Android, it, right? buy a subscription, learn a language. I'm going to learn a language. iOS and Android. Gonzalo has a girlfriend in France, so he, he better, he better, he better, he better start getting into Bilingual app. Hey, Zach, and, and do we get a discount or, or, or that's? Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. We're working on doing some sort of program, but at the moment, you, you're just like everyone else, Danny. You're not that special. Okay. But you are special in my heart. How about that? Thanks, 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 thanks. Well, everyone, Zach Hoffman, hey, you need to invite us to some hotel, okay? You, we, <laughs> that, you need, that you need to do, and I'm not paying for anything. Zach, I think it's... it's Danny, thanks so much for the conversation. Thank, you so, much, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Gonzalo.